Good morning. Okay, don't say da 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 da. My name is Doreen Jacobs, turning row. I am from the Sutina Nation, the Dene. I've been with Awu Dun for 15 years. I started out with in child support and now I'm over at the Family Resource Center in Forest Lawn. I'm Hoaspich. Good day. I am Floranda Kootenay. I'm originally from the Stony Nakoda Nation. And first of all, I'd like to welcome you into the traditional territories of Treaty 7, which consists of towards the east, the Siksika Nation, and towards the south, the Gani Bloods, Pikani, and more southwest is the Sutina people, and towards the west are my people, the Nakoda Mountain people. I myself, same as Doreen, we've been both with Alton Healing Lodge for 15 years. And for me, my passion is supporting families, women, children who are um, fleeing abusive situations. During this um, pandemic of the COVID-19, that social distancing and sanitizing your hands and making sure you do your part in uh, helping promote the disease control. Growing up, I was always told that what we're about to do, preparing food for our families, for our loved ones, for our nations and other people, that um, we need to be able to share our food, put our good energy, positive energy into our foods, and to keep in mind that um, the main ingredient is our spirituality, and our love that we put into our food, especially when we're making fried bread, banana, food that we're preparing for our families. And for me, this is the way I've practiced for many years. So we'll start off with a prayer and I will pray in my first language, which is Nakoda, and then I'll interpret. While Shigine loving creator, God, thank you for today. We invite you, come in here, come into this room, pray for us. Hold our hand and pray, pray with us. As we're about to cook, so that we make delicious food and let it nourish our body. To give us strength, Creator, with this food. I pray over the food and the hands that are preparing to cook. Creator, we'll walk with you. Guide us, lead us. Lord, with your support and help, things will turn out positive. Give us strength. Thank you, loving Creator God. What I was told as a child is what we survive on, what sustains us, meaning uh, bannon and fried bread, it's not a part of our traditional culture, meaning living off the land from the berries to the buffalo to the moose to the deer. Fry bread and banana was not a part of our traditional survival. However, when the Europeans came about the land here in Canada, the Europeans were the ones who taught our great-great-grandmothers. It says in the history books that the European man taught the lady. It doesn't exactly say it nicely like that, but taught our great-grandmothers how to make bannock. So 
in regards to that, Bannock has been a part of our uh, survival since the reserves started being set up since the 1800s. We, growing up on our nation out in Sutina, we, um, I was in my seven or eight and, and our grandmothers, our aunts taught us how to make Bannock. And for us, again, that was our survival food with our uh, uncles doing the hunting. And, and I looked forward to making Bannock at a very young age. And so every, but every uh, recipe is gonna be different. My recipe will be totally different from Florenda. And so, you know, there's no one set. Now you can cheat and go into Google and look for recipes. <laughs> That's my experience growing up with um, learning how to make that. Be showing you my um, way of making fried bread. First of all, again, wash your hands and make sure that your hair is tied back. And now that you've cleansed, your mind is in a positive, healthy state of mind because you're gonna put your positive energy into the fried bread and to you know that you're in a giving spirit that you're gonna give and being generous. What I do is I usually don't measure, but just so that people know, I would say four two so four scoops, like four scoops of um, the flour. Because I know this morning people ask me, oh, you're gonna be on YouTube, what, like, what's your measurement? And I, and I said, okay, I'm just gonna go with four two, like four scoops of flour and two big heapings of, um, of the uh, Robin Hood baking powder, magic baking powder. So again, Robin Hood, and it doesn't matter what flour you use. So now we have four cups of flour and we have Robin Hood, the good stuff. <laughs> and this is um, the magic powder again, Robin Hood. And I always put like big, generous heapings, like heapings. Don't be scared to put extra because this is what makes it rise. And just kind of mix it around, shift it around. And when I look at it, it seems like there's more flour and that's okay. I myself, I, I prefer if I boil my water, have one that's boiled, like let it cool down and then put it in here and for me, what I did is I made like a little circle in the middle and I keep stirring it and then just keep adding the water. And then keep mixing it. And you don't wanna play with it too much. So I would say for me, that's perfect. Let it sit like this and we get our uh, grease ready for the uh, frying. So in my family, like back in the day, when they were giving us rations, rations meaning whatever the government gave us, and most often it was lard. So that's like animal pork fat. And nowadays, we have healthier choice. So that's what we're using today is vegetable oil. What's really, really important is you need to have the temperature and like the element needs to be on all the time so it can give the rise to the fried bread. So as soon as I feel that it's it's warm enough and right now it's still very uh, cold so. Yeah. And then I'll set up over here so a lot. Her and I burn some. <laughs> <laughs> they do, they do the work. So here's the dough and what I do is I'll take a little, like a piece. Depends what I'm gonna make. If I'm gonna make an Indian taco, I'll take a bigger piece. But this one, we're going to be, I'll say using it for snack. So we don't play with it too much. And then I'll move closer. And then the grease, it looks ready. Here we go. And then put maybe like a napkin. Yeah, in. some napkins. There we go, voila. I'm gonna move it. And it's done. Wow. And this is 
the end result. And this is how I was taught how to make fried bread by my family, among our nation. Thank you. So, I'm Doreen. I am gonna um, teach you the way uh, I was taught growing up and I kind of altered uh, through experience my bannock making. Our ancestors, we never had spoons, measurements, measurement, two cups, this. We eyeballed it. We knew what we had, our ingredients, and we used our hand and we poured it in. So I, um, I use, it all depends on what I'm cooking for. If I'm cooking for my family, I kind of know how much flour I'm gonna use. Or if I'm cooking for an agency, then I know I have to, you know, get help. <laughs> okay, so these are just demonstrations, so I don't need a whole lot, but I'm just guessing there and there. This is, I use salt. Unlike Florenda, I use salt and I'm gonna use my hands because that's how I, I was learned, you know, cooking and we did, our ancestors never had spoons, never had measuring cups. They just cooked and, and showed us as, as young girls. I put in my baking powder and like Florenda said, this is the yeast of the bread. It makes the, the bannock rise. So <clears throat> I do a couple of heaping teaspoons. I stir the dry ingredients together. Make sure, you know, it's all even. I make a hole in the in the flour in the bowl and I put my my water. I pour it in. So with me when I do bake bannock I use the vegetable oil, or when we didn't have vegetable oil, I would use we, our grandparents, our grannies, Winnie Crochell, um, her sister, Bessie McGinnis, would teach us, Sarah, uh, Mary Jane Starlight. They all taught us how to make the bannock with the lard. We would kind of crumple it up and rub it in together. So with this, the vegetable oil, I would just pour again, eyeball it. It was um, easy that way. So I would stir it with my my fork. I usually use a fork because the fork's got a good brim. I would put a bowl here and then I would put um, a bit of flour, just a bit of flour on my bowl, my plate. For me, I take it like this, and I knead my bread. I knead it just like we're doing yeast bread. Okay, and then I put it on the plate here. And then I just go play with it. And then I knead it again to form the pan, the baking pan. And then I would get my baking pan. I would take the uh, mozzola, put this on a paper towel, and I would put it in the pan so the bread doesn't stick. Okay. And then again, I would grab the bread, make sure it's all formed and then I would put it in the um, pan and I would knead it like this. This is the bannock that I'm going to put in the oven. I'm going to center in the center and I always put it on the top rack. I put my oven on to 350, set my timer for 20-25 minutes. Thank you. Enjoy your wahunga with your bread, your fried bread. It was an honor to teach you mothers, young mothers, uh, uh, even the dads, to learn how to bake, bake the baked bannock, and happy Aboriginal Day. Thank you.